Welcome to a journey through the history of art. We will travel along a timeline from the caves to the 19th century. My name is Dr. Jean Willett. Let's begin by making the familiar unfamiliar. Watching art become art. Contemporary art is usually defined as an activity that is deliberately apart from normal life and ordinary reality. But in 500 BCE, art as we define it did not exist. Instead, a cultural phenomenon that might be better termed visual culture was embedded into society. Although there were no artists in the modern sense, there were artisans or cultural producers. As the consistency of styles and techniques seen from the caves to Egyptian art implies, the idea of being different, creating a signature style, being innovative or inventive was an alien concept. Perhaps because art was tied to ritual forms, it had to remain consistent and unchanging. But in the Greek culture, unprecedented changes began to take place in the culture and in the mode of visual production. It is with the culture of ancient Greece, especially the city of Athens, that the modern concepts of what we call art and art making begin to emerge. On the surface, little has changed. The cultural producers are still artisans trained in workshops and involved in their community, working in the service of civic and religious interests. The visual culture is still given function by the orders of the ruling class, and much of the art is connected to higher purposes. But, for the first time, we are able to see a practice that had probably always existed, but not preserved, a kind of commercial art or mass production seen in Greek vases. These vases were purely functional. In the early archaic period of ancient Greece, the large vases in the geometric style, Greek art introduced something new into the history of cultural production, the concept that art would and should evolve and change. Compared to the standardized and static art forms unchanged for centuries seen in other older cultures, Greek art progressed moved forward toward an equally unprecedented goal. Following a teleology of observation, Greek artists moved from archaic convention to classical idealism to Hellenistic realism. The seafaring Greeks were aware of Egyptian culture on the other side of the Mediterranean, and they took note of the monumental scale of architecture and sculpture. But Greek culture was essentially different from Egyptian culture, based not on an empire unified by a god-king, but upon a loose coalition of city-states presided over by highly qualified human beings. The culture had no need to awe and overpower the subjects. Ancient Athens, for example, sought to unify the people, to inspire them to fulfill their duties as citizens and participants in a democracy. Architecture and sculpture were on a human scale, monumental, but not on the mega scale of an Egyptian temple. The humanism, or the human-centered society of ancient Athens, shaped the art. Rather than rely upon inherited conventions for the human form, the Greeks discarded schema and replaced conventions with empirical observation and close scrutiny of nature. It should be stressed that Egyptian painting and sculptures, heavily dependent upon the human figure, were an important precedent for the Greeks. But the Greeks equated humans with gods, introducing another new concept, perfection of nature, which was linked to observations. Because no Greek painting other than the vase decoration has survived, the evolution of art in Athens from archaic rigidity to classical grace can be meticulously charted only through their sculpture. For the first time since the caves, we see a strict observation of nature. But this time, man, as William Shakespeare once said, is the measure of all things.